Hi, this is Simon from HomeKit News, and this week we're looking at a new temperature and humidity sensor with a lovely e-ink display and Bluetooth 5. Let's take a look. So starting as we do with the packaging and the box here is about as Apple as you can get in terms of its appearance. The product in question today is the Qingping Temp and Relative Humidity Monitor H version, with H standing for HomeKit of course. Its two main functions are to measure temperature and humidity with the device using Bluetooth 5 and the device is able to record 30 days worth of data via the company's own app. You do get some basic specs on the back in Chinese unfortunately and the Qingping logo on the bottom. The battery used for this device is a CR2430 coin battery. Let's not waste any more time then and just have a look shall we? So the first thing you'll see is the device itself and you can already see the benefits of the e-ink display even when the device doesn't actually have a battery in it. You also get a manual that comes with an instance of the HomeKit QR code and finally a wall mount in case you want to place it on a wall or other vertical surface. The package does normally come with a battery too but this was removed when shipped to me for safety reasons. Whilst the specs on the box are in Chinese, the manual itself comes in both Chinese and English, although you probably won't need to consult it much as the device is fairly simple in what it does. Having a quick look at the monitor, you get visual access to all of the info you're likely to need, with the temperature across the top, which can be displayed in Celsius or Fahrenheit, and the relative humidity levels at the bottom. At the top is a Bluetooth logo along with a battery icon. There's not a lot on the back except for another instance of the HomeKit code, the company's logo on the kickstand and a button to change between Celsius and Fahrenheit. The recessed button also doubles up as a receptacle for the mounting plate for a wall. Now both the plate and monitor are magnetic so they hold together nicely. The stand also has an adhesive strip to stick it to the wall which I'll demonstrate later. Let's now have a closer look at the device so you can see its features in more detail. So first we get a Bluetooth logo, the battery life icon, the temperature in Celsius or Fahrenheit and the relative humidity all on a very easy to read display. On the back as already mentioned is the HomeKit code, the button and mount recess along with a kickstand that also houses the battery compartment. One extra piece of equipment I did want to share is the company's Bluetooth to Wi-Fi gateway. Now this isn't HomeKit compatible as such, but it does allow this and the previous version of this device to connect to your phone when using the company's app. It can also work with nearly all Bluetooth devices in the Mi Home app, which can include simple things like sensors and even Bluetooth locks. I'll now just quickly install the battery to get the sensor up and running. Now I don't have long nails, so I'm just using a screwdriver to open the kickstand, but it's actually quite easy to open anyway. Underneath is the circular battery cover, which just opens with a simple twist. Now as previously stated, this uses a CR2430 battery, which should give you around 12 months of uh, usage. Once you've managed to get the battery in and the cover secured, which in my case required both hands, you can see that when we take a look at the display, it immediately starts to show measurements, although it does take a little while to stabilize. Now for the benefit of our US viewers, to show that it definitely displays Fahrenheit too, I'll just press the button on the back to show that it definitely switches between the two temperature standards. So we've got centigrade or Celsius and Fahrenheit. I've mentioned that the battery compartment also acts as a kickstand so whilst you may not want it on a wall, some may prefer it to be on their desk for quick viewing which I think is a great little bonus. I myself prefer to have it mounted on a wall using the magnetic wall mount but it's great to have the opportunity for either. I was a real fan of the product even before the HomeKit version existed and so I knew it would be great once it got HomeKit compatibility. Now the HomeKit version has been with me for over a year now and it's been exceptional. There really is little difference visually between the two as you can see here aside from minor details on the back which are the HomeKit code of course and the Qingping logo. Both use Bluetooth 5 from what I can gather and both have the same kickstand of course. Now whilst this previous version can work with Mi Home and the company's own app, the new version can only work with their app and HomeKit. So if you are planning on using it for automations in Mi Home as well, you're out of luck unfortunately. 
onto the installation and as you can probably guess it's really quite straightforward as is usually the case with HomeKit devices. So you simply click on the plus symbol, select add accessory from the menu and scan the HomeKit code where it'll proceed to add the device to your HomeKit home. And as it's Bluetooth, it doesn't require your Wi-Fi network details to connect, instead using your iPhone in the first instance or a home hub when you're out of range or if you're not connected to your home network. I'm just renaming the two sensors that it comes with and with iOS 13 the two sensors to come together under one tile although you can split them up so each sensor has its own tile which I personally prefer. You can see here that the measurements on the device match the measurements in the home app although there's always a slight delay in the two syncing up which I believe is mostly down to Bluetooth being a low energy protocol. I'm going to separate out the two sensors and look at the settings individually now. So with the temperature sensor settings, you get to see the battery level as well as the current temperature in addition to various other minor details about the device itself. I can of course do the same for the humidity sensor which also displays the current readings, the battery level and the same additional details. Onto wall mounting, which really requires no skill at all. Uh, you can see the first version of the company's product, which uses the older LCD display type. Now, whilst it looks good enough here, in anything approaching low light, it's a lot easier to read the e-ink display. Finally, we'll take a look at the company's own app. Now, this isn't a HomeKit app as such, instead aiming to mostly provide more detailed information on the sensors than you're able to get from HomeKit itself. Once the app is synced with the device you get both 24 hour and 30 day data on both temperature and humidity. Each data point can be selected individually to see the measurements over the course of 24 hours and 30 days. Because the app also works with both the Bluetooth gateway I mentioned earlier as well as the non-HomeKit version of this device, I can still get all the relevant data as with the HomeKit version. So if like me you have a non-HomeKit version lying around, you can still make use of it via this app. With the Bluetooth gateway, data syncing will occur without you needing to be in Bluetooth range of the device of course. Whilst the app gets its data from the device's two sensor, it also can show weather and pollution data based on your location, although it may only measure data for Chinese locations at present. Now the company makes air quality monitors too, so these extras along with all the settings you can adjust are designed with these products in mind. To me this is an excellently laid out app that's really nice to use and easily looks as good as the equivalent data sections you would get in the EVAP for example, which for a lot of companies, both Western and Asian, seems to be hard to achieve for some reason. You can even export your data if you so wish, so this app has a lot going for it. Even though this is a basic device in many ways, to me accessing the data both for use in automations as well as being able to see it visually without your phone takes this a step above many other sensors. So I've really got nothing bad to say other than it could only possibly be improved by being Zigbee based, but we can't have it all. For the full written review, head over to HomeKit News via the link in the description and we'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.